All right, guys, so this is going to be one of those must-know pathway videos. It ties into biochem perfectly, and a little bit later, we'll kind of kind of see where it really does connect, but I, this is just one of those pathways. It, it kind of doesn't follow the phenylalanine right now, uh, but it will later. So try the questions. It's a great pathway. Have it memorized, and let's just kind of keep moving forward with this whole step one journey. So hope you like the video. All right, guys, so here's the question. It says, by supplementing uh, cyanocobalamin, the facilitation of homocysteine decreasing to which uh, facilitates homocysteine decreasing to which the following occurs. Uh, that's kind of a weird, weird, weird wording. But anyways, long story short, <clears throat> it sounds like if you give cyanocobalamin, it allows homocysteine to do what? Um, it, it decreases homocysteine, which means transitions it to something else. So the question reads, a research article suggests that patients who have an increased serum level of homocysteine would benefit from cyanocobalamin supplementation. One of the more serious complications of homocysteinuria is blood clotting, which can be life-threatening. By supplementing cyanocobalamin, the facilitation of homocysteine decreasing to which of the following occurs? All right, so <clears throat> long story short, I mean, obviously they're very kind to give you the diagnosis, right? So you got to know that pathway and the, and the pathway that deals with homocysteine, okay? Because there's a, t a lot of questions uh, that, that really kind of can come from this, and it's really good for biochemistry. So think of this. It always starts with homocysteine. Now, if you have a buildup of homocysteine, they call that homocysteinuria, okay? Now, what does that look like? Well, like we said, it's a buildup. It's an increase in homocysteine. Okay, you can diagnose it, homocysteine in the urine and such. Well, who cares, right? Well, what's the problem if you have too much uh, homocysteine and you have homocysteinuria? Uh, you can have, the problem is, you can have mental retardation. Okay, so that's a big deal, obviously. Um, some, some things that it looks like, you can have downward uh, lens dislocation. And, you know, usually when I was teaching this in person, you know, what's the upward lens dislocation that you think of? Marfan's, right? You think tall person, you look up, upward lens dislocation. Downward lens dislocation, you better be thinking homocystinuria. All right? And so you can have clots. All right? Clots can lead to problems like stroke and MI. Okay? So <clears throat> that's why homocystinuria is a big deal because... You can have mental retardation, downward lens dislocation, and clots that lead to stroke and MI. Now, usually, you know, I'd say, you know, most modern places, you can get this on a newborn screen. Um, you know, they can kind of test it out genetically, right? Because it, there's like a genetic component to this. So, you know, a lot of times the signs can come between one and three years of age, okay? Uh, but like uh, phenotypic, I should say signs, you know, a lot of times can can, can can come between one and three times, one to three years of age, but they say phenotypical expression, like, uh, and I'm trying to think, well, what's the difference between those two? Um, as early as it can be is one to three, but typically, if nothing else, you know, you're going to get that five to seven years of age, um, and you can have juvenile osteoporosis as a result. You know, there's a low bone density, uh, kyphosis as a result. That's one of the things of elevation of homocysteine. So, back to the pathway, right? That's what this is all about. It's the pathway. So, homocysteine can go either left or right. And kind of think of it like that. Say, look, I can take homocysteine left or right. If I go to the right, okay, it turns into cystathione, which turns into cysteine. And that's very important, too, okay? Or it's very important, this guy. But we're going to start with homocysteine. So, homocysteine... And we're going to throw this guy in there because you see this is uh, serine. So serine in the setting of B6, right, per, uh, pyridoxal uh, phosphate, B6, <clears throat> homocysteine with some B6, serine can make cystathione. Okay, now you need the enzyme cystathione synthase. Okay, so you need you need a lot of little players here, right? So to get to make homocysteine go down, meaning turn into something else, you need it can go to cystathione, but you better have some 
cysteine synthase, and you better have a little B6, okay? And then eventually that can turn into cysteine, which we'll come back to. Now, if you took a left turn at homocysteine, and you needed to break homocysteine down this way, it can go into methionine, okay? Turns into methionine. Important too, right? Methionine, you gotta think that's part of the, it's the uh, start codon, all right? AUG, methionine, okay? It's the first amino acid, they say it docks in the ribosome uh, during protein synthesis. You know, you always ask yourself when you're learning something, like, who cares, right? Well, we care, we gotta make methionine. Number one, we can't have a lot of homocysteine or we get this problem. We gotta make some methionine so we can at least start uh, making protein synthesis and stuff. But now when you take that left turn, who do you need? Well, number one, you need homocysteine methyltransferase, right? You need this guy to make all this happen, but then you also, in that little methyl thing, you need B12, okay? Now, another name for B12 is cobolamine, okay? Cobolamine. The word uh, cyanocobolamine just means it's more the uh, synthetic version of it, all right? Man-made. So cobolamine, B12, cyanocobolamine, synthetic version. But you need B12 to make homocysteine go to methionine. You need methionine because that makes protein synthesis. So that's the pathway, guys. This is really the big time pathway that you're gonna have to know. But just remember, it starts with homocysteine. You're gonna take a right turn or a left turn. You take the right turn, makes cysothione, makes cysteine, okay? And think about the cysteine that I, that if you got too much of this, too many of these guys, Two uh, cysteine make cysteine, okay? Let's see the E-I-N-E, -E, you get two of those, you can make cysteine. Now, who cares about this? Because, but that's the guy that you gotta be thinking about. It's kind of on the lower end of the percents, but you can make kidney stones, okay? Uh, kidney stones, okay. So, what makes buildup of homocysteine? Well, if we know the normal pathway, we can just say, well, let's start knocking these things out. What's one way that we can do it? Well, one way is if we don't have this cystothione uh, synthase, if I don't have him, well, that's gonna give me an increase in homocysteine, right? Because it's gonna be, everything's gonna be pushed this way. If it's not gonna go to the right, it means it's gonna be, everything's gonna be kind of facilitated that way. So how would I treat that? If I know I don't have this guy, what do I need to do? Well, number one, I need to decrease, you know, if I could do it in the diet, uh, whatever I eat, high, you know, meats, proteins that are high in methionine, I need to decrease methionine. And if I'm not making it past this step, what do I need to supplement with, if I could? Cystine, okay? And I can see them asking questions, something like this, do you know? And then what would I wanna supplement? I would also maybe wanna supplement B12, right? Because since I'm pushing everything back that way, I'm gonna probably be using more of this guy and, I'll, and I wanna make sure I have a bunch of him to kind of facilitate it so I don't have the buildup of homocysteine, right? Our whole goal is to get this guy down. But one way of doing it is, is this guy gets knocked out. Uh, the second way is just, they say, uh, poor, you see this in the step one book, poor affinity of cysothione synthase with uh, B6, remember? We need B6 here, and if these guys don't play play well together, then I'm not going to be making this this you know this kind of stuff, and I'll have a buildup of homocysteine. And then the third way is um, if I have a decrease in this homocyst uh, homocysteine methyl transferase, because again, if I don't have this guy, what's going to happen? Homocysteine won't be able to go this way. And again, I'm gonna have a buildup of homocysteine, puts me at risk for all this kind of stuff, and it would push things maybe to go in the other way. So really, if you know the pathway, you know the enzymes, you know why homocysteine gets built up. Uh, but know the normal first, obviously. We wanna make methionine, start codone, protein, protein synthesis. We wanna make this go in this direction so we don't build up homocysteine. Now, back to the original question. Now, that was a lot, I know, but back to the original question. Research article, patients have been increased. So they have an increased level of homocysteine. We benefit from cyanocobolamine supplementation. Good. Well, we know that, right? If we have this, we give them B12, it, it, it helps. It just helps go that, go that way. 
One of the more serious complications of homocysteinuria is blood clotting, which can be life-threatening. By supplementing this, facilitation of homocysteine decreasing to which the following occurs. Okay, so basically they're saying, if you give them, when you give cyanocobalamin, when you give B12, it helps homocysteine turn into what? And the correct answer, methionine, okay? Of course, they're gonna put A, distraction, cysteine. It's not gonna go that way. If, you know, if this thing said B6, I might say it goes that way, but it said B12, so I gotta say it makes homocysteine go down into methionine. Okay? It's a good question. It's long, but it's good. Make sure you know the pathway. This one says, a nine-year-old male with elevated homocysteine levels, okay, so in, in the urine, uh, is cognitive delayed, has a DEXA scan to measure bone density. Which of the following T-scores, uh, T-score readings, would be most expected in this patient with his newly found diagnosis? Well, elevated homocysteine, you relatively young person, we know that's homocysteinuria, uh, homocysteinuria right? Increase homocysteine, mental retardation, downward lens dislocation, clots, strokes, MI, and we talked about that. You can also have the osteoporosis, uh, you know, juvenile osteoporosis, and you get the, the, the kyphosis too, right? So anytime you see a young person that has those type of symptoms, you've got to be thinking homocysteinuria. So the real question on this is a DEXA scan. You know, they're testing your knowledge. Do you know what a normal reading is versus an abnormal? Okay. Well, again, if you don't know this, you'd be totally guessing, but it goes like this. So basically, if you think there's a score of negative one, these are T-scores, right? Uh, T-scores, typically, when you, when you do this for like, you know, women that are older, this is the classic people that get this, a T-score is gonna compare them to, uh, to women in their 30s. But anyways, T-score, you gotta be thinking negative one, okay? That's really the, uh, you know, that, that's really the, where, where it goes abnormal to normal. Because if you go negative one or above, meaning plus one or whatever it is, so from negative one and you get all these like say negative 0.5 or whatever, you got zero, then it goes this way, everything going that way is we're just gonna call that normal, okay? So negative one is your big number that you gotta know. When you start going in the other direction, negative one, negative 2.5 and such. So between negative one and negative 2.5, you gotta be thinking, I'm sorry, osteopenia, okay? And if it's, ne if it's less than negative 2.5, you gotta be thinking osteoporosis. So with a person, a kid, nine years old, homocysteine, so it's been there for a little bit of time, it's not like he's three or two, and not that I'm saying it couldn't happen, but he's, he's a little older. So the DEXA scan is gonna show what? Chances are, is it gonna be to the right of negative one or to the left? Because all the abnormal numbers are to the left the good numbers, normal is to the right. So it's gonna to be to the left. Now again, we we're really nice on this, right? What's the only answer that's an abnormal score on this for the most part? Besides, I mean, I don't even know if these can really be that high, but the only thing that's gonna show an abnormal result is gonna be less than negative one, okay? Because again, negative one and negative 2.5, osteopenia, negative, worse than that, osteoporosis. So the only answer is gonna be negative one. It's just a reminder in saying, look, a kid, homocystinuria, just make sure you understand it's osteoporosis, can, uh, juvenile osteoporosis can occur because of the, because of this, one of the reasons. And if they ever ask you a thing on DEXA scan, know that negative one is your, your, your base number to the right normal, to the, to the left of it, it's gonna be abnormal, okay? Correct answer is gonna be A, negative one. And then the last question, it says, uh, which, based on the, this information, which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? It's an 11-year-old, presents to their primary care, accompanied by their parents with concerns for repeat kidney stones. So an 11-year-old kid with kidney stones. You're thinking, what? That's kind of young. Un under urine microscopic exam uh, reveals hexagonal, hexagonal shaped crystals. The child's father was adopted as little is known about his family history, though the child's mom, mother, reports having periodic issues with kidney stones herself. Based on this information, which of the following is most likely diagnosis? Okay, well, it's a giveaway, right? Because what pathway are we learning? It's the homo, you know, homo uh, uh, cysteine, and we said it goes this way, and, you know, you get the uh, cystathione, which makes the cysteine, okay? And then what did we say earlier? We said two of these guys can make uh, cysteine, 
which is a crystal, and that's can make it, and then we think of kidney uh, stones, okay? Anyways, uh, so I know it's in this pathway, but the main thing is here. What is the, say, diagnose, well, the saying, what is the diagnosis for this, right? It's not homocystinuria. If it's homocystinuria, that, this builds up and it doesn't go either way. It stays right there, right? So we know it's not him because we're talking, we just got done talking. This is too much, too much right here. Now, hexagonal shape. Okay, and if you don't know that, that's just going to be basically that's just basically going to be a cysteine uh, a cysteine shape because there's four types four types of kidney stones. Okay, uh, four major types that I that I like to, to at least know. You got the calcium, you got the uric acid, you got the uh, stervite, yeah, and then you got the uh, cysteine. Uh, now. This is kind of very rare per se, low percent, but this is the one that can be obviously like genetic, okay? And what's just for typical, what's the shape? Hexagonal, okay? You got the calcium ones. Calcium, and this, is, this has the increase in oxalate. I think they did a video on like Crohn's and stuff like that. So uh, what can increase this? We have an increase in oxalate, uh, hyperparathyroidism. What's the shape? You can have dumbbell, okay? Dumbbell shape on the calcium oxalate monohydrate, and then you can have an envelope shape for the calcium oxalate uh, dihydrate, okay? This is the di and this is the monohydrate. So the calcium can either be dumbbell shape or envelope, depending on if it's mono or di. The uric, uh, uric acid, they're gonna say this is gonna be rhomboid or football shaped. And then the uh, stervite, uh, they call it like a coffin lid. Okay, kind of a coffin lid shape. So anyways, those are the four basic types. This one you can tell is you know, there's a genetic component because mom has kidney stones and the kid has kidney stones, dad was adopted, so we don't know. But there's a genetic uh, component to the cysteine, okay? But what's the diagnosis? If I see a young kid Kidney stones, hexagonal, which is the giveaway for uh, cysteine. My diagnosis is going to be cystinuria. Okay, and the reason I kind of included this kind of question in there, number one, we got to start getting familiar with the kid. <clears throat> excuse me, the kidney stones: calcium, uric acid, stervite, and cysteine, or cysteine. Uh, cysteine is going to be your genetic hexagonal. Maybe be familiar with the shapes again: coffin stervite. Rhomboids, uric acid, dumbbell and envelope are both calcium, uh, mono and di respectively. And it goes back to the, uh, basically it just goes back to this pathway, right? Homocysteine, know this pathway. Homocysteine can go right or left, and you got cysteine at the end, cysteine at the end, two of those make cysteine, 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 and you can get those kidney stones. So know this pathway, guys, and hope it was helpful.